sure. but but first this this talk was very informative but i fear that a lot of people are are just going to get stumped by the word schema sure so so for the for the uh, convenience and understanding of uh, uh, the larger audience out there who are who don't uh, speak the same technical language like both of us do can you explain schema in a in very simple words for us absolutely absolutely so so let let me let me take uh, you know explain that by a, a small example right um, you know we all know events right we all know events now this event for example right this event when you know when when this talk got scheduled there are different content properties in that talk there is a time that it starts there is a start time there is an end time there is a speaker you know which is me right now name right there is an organization name there is a uh, you know link right now these are all different content now there are two ways of inputting that content into a content management system right either you can club and all that you know uh, in one one text field and input that all that content in, into a one text field or there is another way where you say start date start time end date end time right uh, speaker name uh, zoom link right uh, topic right and have all these as a different fields now the two so from a from a from a front end point of view both are displaying the same content right? there is no difference in the from a front end point of view in the same content right it's still showing uh, you know the both of the content are showing the topic and the name and the speaker name and start time and time but on the back end the the where you have defined different fields what it is doing is it's a very structured content that means the computer the 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 system understand that what that you know content means but if you put that all in the text field the system doesn't understand what that means that means the google doesn't understand what that means unless and until you know there it it does a lot of effort to essentially from an nlp point of view to you know find meaning out of that content right and that is a the different between a structured and an unstructured content and schemas are essentially pre defined structures to the structured content so for everything you know properties real estate um, you know uh, you know bookings you know products every damn thing cars loans everything out there you have a schema right i mean you know uh, you know somebody actually claimed you know i asked this question to one of very senior person in this industry from an seo point of view and he said if there is 97% of the use cases out there you know there is a schema out there there is a structured format uh, right which is already out there so what you have to do when we say implement schema that means make sure that when you are defining content types or the fields in your content right you adhere to that structured format of schema in that uh, you know um, uh, you know uh, in that your content types i mean, hope make, i made made sense yeah 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 absolutely uh, i'd like to continue on this but before that if anyone uh, of you in the audience have any questions uh, please post them on youtube or on zoom and i'll be taking them uh, so continuing on this this bit itself so one of the things that i would add to the schema is that uh, if if uh, anyone has not come across schemas just go to schema.org uh, that is probably the starting point uh, wherein you can see uh, one of the largest a uh, repository of uh, uh, the structures that are uh, uh, accepted by or or agreed upon by by the by by the web community and lots and lots of organizations are honoring that and as uh, as gorup just pointed out there are predefined formats by which you can define and therefore inform a program program or a or or a software that uh, this is how uh, 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 this is an event this is a a recipe this is a person this is an organization and so on and so forth so this is uh, uh, a very 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 essential part uh, of having information in a structured way on the web but gorav you said that mo- even fortune 500 companies don't implement it uh, yeah. why do you think that happens why is that the case so it's there 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 are the the majority reason is essentially um you know awareness right Mm-hmm. but you know it it's not the only reason right uh, see the it's a, it's always an afterthought it's always always an afterthought right and um, what that also means is that you know uh, it's a, it's a pain right so for example new york times right as i said earlier the the, the structured uh, when they started 
implementing cooking right schemas right recipe schemas that means that they went from you know few you know seven eight fields to a 50 field form right now what you know you are asking the content writer to input content in a 50 field rather than a 10 field right yeah. now that's a that's a huge ask right if you will that's a huge ask right um there's a lot of lot of conflict there's a lot of traction uh, i mean uh, you know that, that is, sorry there's that, that a lot of issues right that happens if you start implementing such things in in a large organization but mm -hmm. having said that right there is there is lack of awareness right mm -hmm. uh, in in the digital leadership most of the times right mm -hmm. so they they know about schema they uh, they have heard about schema but how important it is is something that still very very few digital leaders understand right and who do you feel should be championing this in the, in the, in the sense that the, is this something that the developer should come in into the organization and tell and talk about it uh, because uh, that's what I feel, at least personally, because uh, it's definitely yeah. quite technical uh, in nature. Uh, it is, uh, I feel that it is, uh, it is going to be hard for someone who is uh, owning a business or running a business for them to understand yeah. that uh, upfront. So what, where yeah. would you feel uh, should be the highest responsibility for introducing this uh, yeah. in an organization? Do you think this no, developer? Absolutely. Or... I, absolutely. As you said, right, the, this, this the concept is extremely technical, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Right. And, and, you know, so that's why, you know, uh, the, the, the tech folks need to champion this. Right. Uh, but what they have to be, a, you know, a little aware is that, you know, it doesn't only involve, uh, you know, the, the technical implementation, right. It involves a huge buy-in, as I said, right. From content teams. Because now they have to input a content into a much, much bigger fields than in there. Right. It always also involves, uh, you know, buy in from the business things because now it means that, you know, for the same content which you were taking, let's say, you know, it's going to take, you know, much more time for building the same kind of content because it is a much bigger structured format to input the content, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's where, and, and, and what it also does is that it forces, right? It forces uh, the, the people who are building content to adhere to. Uh, a particular format so that they can't skip a particular field and they say, ah, I'm not going to put this information. Right. But because then, then your it's the information is incomplete. Right. 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 Uh, that's where it needs a lot of buy-in from the, from the business. Right. Uh, but showing the importance definitely lies in the, the hands on the technical people because in the end, you know, they understand the concept and how it is affecting um, the overall implementation. Absolutely. All right. Uh, just moving on, uh, coming to voice a little bit more uh, than uh, structured data. Some of the examples that you just shared on in the talk today, are they uh, really voice related searches or voice searches, or they could have been just searches, typed searches as well. Uh, uh, so what is the element of uh, yeah. voice component in the search examples that you shared over here? Uh, sure. Are they so only coming up when voice searches happen? Yes. So NLP, so natural language search, you know, is, you know, I mean, when, so what, so can the natural language search happen, can happen on a mobile or a, or, or a web as well? Absolutely. It can. Okay. It need you know, there is, unfortunately, Google doesn't open the data and, you know, and, 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 and the reason that they have got is that they don't want to bastardize the, the industry that it, you know, the way SEO, SEO industry got bastardized. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, but, but, it, you know, it is, it is at least the, the best we can do, right? The best way that we can get the data around, you know, natural languages search, but no, but voice or no voice, you know, the point is that, you know, the, the content is usually not optimized for natural languages search, right? Right. Right. So you have to optimize because the way the movement, right. And that's where these, these two slides are important because even Google, the way it treats a natural language keyword versus a normal keyword is very, very different. Right. Yeah. So when, when I say, um, uh, you know, you, the content is not optimized for natural language search, I don't mean that, you know, you are not ranking on it. You might be ranking on it, but mm -hmm. are, is it being giving the information? Right. So mm -hmm. for example, right. For the same, um, you know, if you see that right here, you know, Google is, this is even the first video, so it's mm -hmm. not that, you know, he's not giving the importance in is, is lowering down the importance of that video, but you see that, you know, that, that he still trimmed and said that this is, out of this long video, right, long uh, uh, 18 minutes, you see that 18 minute video, 
right? Yeah. You know, these are the 83 settings that you should be looking at. Right. Okay. Now make sure that means that, you know, you have to always be very, very aware that for all your searches where you are, you know, uh, where you are essentially coming on uh, or ranking on, how are you, you know, giving that information very, very quickly. Right. And that's where that means that, you know, so, you know, and, and that's what you have to focus on, right. You know, don't have to really get into that argument of whether it's voice, not voice, but how do I optimize the content for natural language searches and give that I, information I, very contextually. Right. I, I agree with you because I, I do remember about, uh, 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 I would say about uh, even six, seven years back uh, mm -hmm. when you would search something like searching on Google used to be a skill. That if you yeah. can't find the thing that you are searching for, that means you don't know how to put in the right keywords or put in the right set of terms so that Google can understand what you're looking for and give you the right thing. You would almost, as, as tech people, we used to blame uh, uh, our peers around that you don't know how to put in the right keywords in Google to get the result that you want. But Google yeah. is getting smarter over the yeah. last six, six and seven years. So it is now less about your ability to put in the right keywords, but more about the responsibilities taken by a software like Google uh, to figure out what is your intent and then give you the, the best result as possible. And for that re reason, uh, as, as you pointed out, if we give structured data, that means we are helping Google more. We are helping a software like Google learn and understand our content. Uh, so Absolutely. what do you, uh, and in uh, last week I was, uh, I had given a brief session on technical SEO and, and I was pointing out this, this bit uh, uh, last week itself, like, the concept of SEO now has changed into how can we make sure Google understands us better than to preempt or, or, or in any way game the, game the system and optimize for certain keywords and all. So what are your thoughts about this? Like the entire talk that you gave today seemed to be something very much on the lines of how to be, do better at SEO uh, in the modern era uh, than specifically voice. So any comments or any thoughts around this? Sure. I mean, um, yes, I, you, you can, you can definitely say that. Right. And, and, and in the end, right. In the end, uh, uh, what, uh, see what, what end up happening, right. So if you, if you build your content in a way that, you know, it is, uh, um, uh, and, and I, I always, when I, when I, when I used to, to do this talk earlier, right. I, you know, I used to go into a lot of theoretical concept and I re slowly and slowly realized that people are more in, interested to understand more practical implications. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what, and that's where I changed my talk, you know, in the last year or so is that, you know, what are the, what are the, what are some low hanging fruits that you can do, right. For, yeah. for, for building, uh, you know, for optimizing your content for the voice. Mm -hmm. Right now. Uh, so yes, is it technical SEO? Absolutely. Technical SEO, but you know, uh, but it is, it is very, very focused onto one part of the technical SEO, right? Which is, it just, just, just how do you optimize your content or how do you tell your content, uh, you know, Google much better about that, what that your content means, right? Mm -hmm. Context on the content, right? Which is the bedrock of the voice, uh, optimizing your content for the voice world, right? Because, you know, you know, if you remember right earlier, yeah. the context precedes content, content in, in the, in the voice world. So the more you, more you optimize your content for the voice world, right? The voice first world, right? The better, you know, chance you would have to, you know, essentially rank and, and the better chance you would have to, you know, um, you know, um, you know, essentially heard by your consumers on the keywords that you want to them to know information on, right? So it goes hand in hand, right? So yes, the right. more information, the better you tell Google what your content means, the better, you know, chances you have in the voice world. So I would take a step ahead and, and say that you're, you're probably optimizing not just for voice search, but also future of all forms of search. Is that absolutely. right? Absolutely. 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 Okay. Uh, so one of the other things that uh, I had in mind is that, uh, do you feel that there is a, uh, it's kind of related to this because you said uh, people have been saying that voice doesn't work, something like that. Uh, yeah. And in my context, at least, uh, and I, I don't work with the same set of clients that you work with, but give me some information around that. A lot more organizations are focusing on, ads and digital ads to get discovered than focusing on organic search or search optimizing for search in the first place. Uh, maybe because it gives quick returns, uh, maybe for from uh, for maybe for other things as well, but, but largely organic search or ranking high on search, uh, 
doesn't seem to be as exciting thing as it was say uh, five seven years back. Uh, are you observing a similar thing, or are ads taking over more than optimizing for search? Well, um, if that's the case, I mean, it's it your clients are a lot in trouble. So, so I'll give you a very quick example. Okay. If the ad and you know it's a little you know different from you know what we are talking about voice, but you know just from an ad point of view, right? Ad. Mm -hmm. So if the content or if the if the strategy for the traffic acquisition strategy, okay, mm -hmm. is ad centric, and if it is not being optimized, right, on how your, uh, you know, how it would end up bringing more organic traffic mm -hmm. in the in in the long run. Right then, you know, it there, there's a big problem in the strategy. Okay, in in even in that, you know, ad acquisition strategy, mm -hmm. that the the usual way the, or the right way to implement a ad driven acquisition traffic acquisition strategy is when you know that you actually use ads to give Google a signal that this particular page is important for the users for a particular keyword. Right. Okay. Right and uh, and 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 essentially keep on optimizing it. So uh, right, so for for the the users are, which are driving in. So if a person come in and if you have a let's say seventy percent bounce rate from mm -hmm. the ads, right? Uh, and that's why I don't really like this. Uh, you know the uh, the landing pages concept of ad driven uh, yeah. strategy because it's very very tactical. And it, if it's if a, if a, if a you know, if if a company is doing that, then it's they're they're very thinking short term, right? They're extremely short term. You know, when I work with clients on a on an ad driven uh, you know traffic acquisition strategy, I bring back them to the website to a to a landing page for sure. They have to have a form, but the whole idea is that you know how so if I'm able to let's say bring one thousand people from ads to a to a page. And and one thousand people. If I'm able to reduce my bounce rate to a place where it's twenty thirty percent, right, on that particular keyword, there's a okay. very very good chance that it will give the signal back to Google that this is a good page that people are liking on that particular keyword. Okay. okay. So if your ad driven strategy is not working on that lines, right, to optimize you know uh, your content, your layout, your structure, your CTAs, for to ensure that you have a very low bounce rate. So that mm -hmm. you can find, uh, you know, get a lot of more, you know, organic results in the future. Then there is a huge problem in that strategy itself. Right. right. I I, so I do I, have a. Uh, sorry, yeah. go on. Complete your point. Oh yeah, and and just to just to answer what you what you originally asked, I think you know, and the way that the, you know, even the, the large clients, um, uh, I mean, ac organic acquisition. So even the video that I you know showed earlier, the L'Oreal video, it does talk yeah. about the organic. Organic traffic acquisition, right, and mm -hmm. it, it is definitely a center whole centerpiece, right, uh, of, of of for a lot of organizations, right, because they have to think long term. They have to think five years. They have to think, you know, ten years, right. Especially the large enterprises, right. So they can't think of ad-driven uh, strategies, which is extremely small, right, a month or a couple of months, you know, uh, kind of a strategy, right. Yeah, and you know, they, you can't, uh, you know, it, it is two different things, right. So you you know you you can have a one two month strategy. But you know, uh, but that would not mean that you know you not you should not have a long term strategy, right? And long term strategy is what is going to anyway give you results, right? Uh, you know, you, yes. Right. I do have a question around the thing that you explained uh, when you say that uh, uh, from an ad, if someone comes to your your site and the bounce rate is low, uh, the fact that Google gets a signal around it. So uh, is this something that is documented, publicly known, or something like that? Uh, that this there being a signal. There is a lot of growth hacking uh, articles around it, right? Okay. Um, uh, and not only Google, right? And it's a it's a quick you know um, uh, tip, right, for anybody out there, uh, you mm -hmm. know, for, which, have, which have worked. Um, I don't know who wrote about this. Probably, no, not Neil Neil Patel. I don't know somebody. Somebody wrote okay. about this. I don't. Okay. Somebody wrote. I don't remember exactly. So, so if you let's say if you have an, if you're writing an article on a medium, okay, mm -hmm. and a lot of people have actually seen that. So see everybody. Okay, let's look at TikTok algorithm. Okay, let's look at like any any sites algorithm, right? How do you come on the featured page? Okay, so Medium or TikTok or you know everything they they essentially look at the particular content and they say, how much traffic is this content getting? Are the people actually engaging with that particular content? Right? right. Every damn 
you know uh, platform works like that right right and 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 you know so for example on a, if you're writing an article on medium right right and you want that a medium article to get featured on that featured page right the quick dirty hack is that just run a very low uh, dirty uh, you know facebook ad which is you know with a low cpm mm -hmm. okay and a low or a low you know uh, ctc uh, right uh, and just you know send some traffic initial traffic to medium so that's going to give a uh, give a signal to uh, medium that hey this is something that people are liking people are reading right and 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 it it automatically pushes it back to uh, to the featured page it, it's a it's a very well known hack actually now i believe for i mean yeah. have these so have medium said that no but are there Absolutely. enough i agree you so usually i don't recommend these hacks that's <laughs> that's my stand uh, but but that coming yeah. from gorov this is something that if anyone wants to practice uh, please uh, uh go, go go ahead give it give this a shot but with specifically with google it it sounded because i have a counter logic in that is running through my head at this point of time because if if someone was paying ad revenue if google is getting ad revenue on something mm -hmm. and then learning that this is actually working oh, what is the incentive for google to actually start organically raising it because then it it tend it would end up losing that revenue also uh on, on the other hand i do get this the the, the understand this point where wherein uh, all these platforms want to show the highest hit thing first because uh, they they all uh, want to show that their best content out there because yeah. then only uh, more people will have trust on it but the revenue will will start getting reduced if they started using that as a, a search yeah. signal that's yeah. what so, is running my head. so it it doesn't it, it it's not going to help google in the long term right and i think google definitely understands that right so uh, and and this piece you know people have seen uh, benefits i have we have seen benefits with with the clients right and you know with uh, you know with targeting see in the end you know google wants to make sure that you know it is serving content to people which people find interesting right which people mm -hmm. find worthy enough to spend their time on that's the whole okay. goal okay which which we are working on now if in the long if if you know google don't uh, if so let's say you know just take take argument for a moment right google you know uh, it doesn't push that back on the organic acquisition right you know i mean and the person you know and there is a good content that is being created right at one point of time the, the the organization will run out of money right to run ads okay mm -hmm. and you know and 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 i think that's that's very counterintuitive for google in the long term when I mean, google has to help business right i mean it's it's kind of universal right we have to make sure that we have to do the right things for our clients and the right thing would happen to us it's a very right. cliche term i know but it works all the time right to answer Absolutely. all this right right do the right things for clients and the right thing happen to you and i think that's what the motto is for business and so it will not help google in the long term right even if it's if it, even it's going to help in the shorter term from ad revenue not in the long term for sure i mean it is going to fuel if if it helps the business it's going to help them in the in the, in the longer term right all right me makes sense absolutely uh, uh speaking of this voice based search again one more question i had was uh how if if someone has to validate that voice based searches are increasing and obviously there are facts thrown like about 50% of searches have become voice based and all uh and i assume it uh, these these numbers that that come uh, uh, just this is just a side question to you uh, gaurav uh, do these number combine all the bots and alexas and apple series and all all of that combined or is it just voice search on google which is uh, which has increased really to a very large proportion of uh, global searches so the the 50% uh, you know the 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 number actually came in from uh, one of our senior executive of alibaba many many years back in okay. uh, you know in in a, in, a, in a conference and that's been mm -hmm. going around and you know for a long time people you know so yes everybody did take that but very few people realize that actually where that number came from where has it come from yeah yeah uh, but it actually came from alibaba uh, many many years back that by 2020 50% of the searches would be voice based searches it's a very old uh, you yeah. know uh, um the the last time that google shared the data okay was 2017 uh, okay. when google shared the voice based data and uh, you know and there is actually i think indian rajan andaran or someone who had uh, some of the article in some I, you can you can quickly google it but i think 2017 was the last time it it opened the data 
right? Uh, and uh, what it said that on mobile, you know, uh, I'm, again, you know, I don't have that handy, but in mobile, right, the the uh, you know the voice searches are the second number of searches, right? Okay. Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, and and there was a number to it. You know, you can you can quickly find it if you Google it. Uh, but after that, Google has not opened up the data. Okay. Neither Alex, neither Alexa, ni- nor uh, you know any any of them. And and in the last conference, we, there was one of the conference, and um, I was actually talking to a panel which included all big shots of this mm-hmm. industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did raise that question that why you guys are not opening up the data. Uh, right. So the answer that came out from that panel was that because we don't want to bastardize the industry. Uh, yeah. The way the SEO industry got bastardized. So I think Google just don't want to open the data. Okay. And that's where you know this is the only, this is the, probably the be- best known way right now to know. You know, uh, just go to hrf.com, okay. and if you if you if you actually if you put in any website name, you will find the keywords which for which you know the traffic is coming on the site, and there okay. is a section which talks about the NLP queries that is coming on okay. the website. Right, so you can just look at the NLP queries, and you'll find a lot of natural language. This is hrf dot hrf dot a hrf dot com. A hrf dot com, great. Right. Yeah, that's a very uh, popular popular tool in SEO. Popular tool, right, yeah. right. One the question that I actually want, intended to ask that if someone is a website owner and they want to know how many of the searches to my own site is coming yeah. from voice, is there yeah. any way for them to do it? How how can they find that out? So hrf is one good tool for knowing that. Right, and then you know you can look at the 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 Google the site console, right? The uh, uh, you know uh, with the webmaster console, right? Mm-hmm. And you know you can find a lot of uh, keywords there, right? If you dig in the data, you can keep you know find there. Uh, there's okay. been rumors, um, you know, not confirmation, but there's been rumors that is soon there would be a tab in there which would say voice uh, in the Google search console, right? So okay. at least the owners know that what is. You know what is the kind of a searches are coming in? It has not confirmed yet, but for now it's just uh, so you have to look at the keywords, look into the keywords in which the from the traffic is coming in, and you have to essentially dig in and to find which are the natural language uh, keywords. HRF does a good job; it it gives you a complete different tab which just ranks all these uh, keywords. So if you are you know high traffic website, you know you have to probably dig in a very very deep into or find these searches. HRF does a good job to essentially just highlight them very quickly. Um, right but uh, but in any case non english vernacular searches in india and all a lot of it is happening on on voice uh, because it just it's just easier to uh, yeah. just speak it out to google rather than to type a non non english uh, thing so uh, is that a trend or something that you all uh, you have also observed or you are aware of oh absolutely i think that's something that you know is uh, i mean google uh, so i have some videos in the Uh, which is actually high, you know, skipped. I skipped because of the time, but yeah. you know, anybody who was looking at some of the videos uh, right here, right? So you know, I talk about a little accessibility, um, mm-hmm. right? And and different videos, you know, out there. And these mm-hmm. videos essentially talk about a lot about the accessibility, and it has actually a video around, um, you know, similar use case that you know in India, right, where people are using, uh, you know, uh, you know, so they are they are pointing. the the video camera to a particular text and it's reading them at, out aloud right? right so accessibility is a very very big focus it's a very very big focus and recently even um, um you know the accessibility standards that they got updated last year i believe or or this year i don't exactly remember which year this got but uh, you know uh, in in us they you know the federal government essentially added that your uh, your content should be understandable in audio format as well right. okay uh you know that it should be so people who can you know read you know who are blind you know mm-hmm. can also you know understand it very well right mm-hmm. uh so the whole push uh around accessibility is a big push and uh, there is a lot of uh, you know research if you look at deep research videos around voice uh in the way that you know the teams which are essentially working in this uh google for you know for for you know up, for for nlp building this nlp engines they right. actually work with people with 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 the um, you know disabilities speech disabilities mm-hmm. right so they are actually trying to perfect uh, the voice recognition right mm-hmm. for people who who, who stutter or who uh, you know who are not very clear in in their speech yeah yeah i mean it's 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 a, it's a fantastic piece right yeah. and i think and disability yeah. is a is a is a huge huge push 
I have not, I have not really dwelled deep into the data of uh, myself on, you know, on saying that, you know, what kind of a searcher, what is the number of searchers and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. But again, you know, I've, I've, yes, I've, I've heard a lot of people saying that, yes, uh, you know, Hindi and, you know, other languages are the big time on voice. Yeah. Regional languages are big time on voice. Yep. Right. Okay. Uh, 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 we'll be uh, running out of time in a bit. I, I'll take a few more minutes uh, of you, uh, Gaurav. Uh, one is, uh, as a closing thought, uh, I just want to know that uh, th- there were three different primary roles that I had talked about at the beginning, which is content teams, design, and the technical or the development teams. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you tell that for the future of search, including voice or outside it as, as well, uh, what should be the role or what are the things that the content team or the design team or the development team should take the primary responsibility of in order to make sure that their websites are friendly for uh, searches through voice or any future form that we, are, we might expect. So can you talk a little bit about what sure. responsibilities the content team should be taking, the design team should be taking, or the development yeah. team should be taking? Sure, absolutely. I can, I can you know, take one, of, one by one. So I think the... the the content team or the people who are responsible for content strategy and it's going mm-hmm. it'll hand in hand with the design teams as well because a lot of time design teams build these content strategies right on you know different right. how the content should be structured and things like that but if i just you know take these two you know in one go uh, what you have to you know ensure that you know you are you know thinking about how some how you're going to serve the same content over a voice based interface Okay, how will somebody understand the context of the content, right? You know, which I've been talking about all, all my talk, you know, in the voice world, right? And that's the that's something that you have to focus on, right? Um, uh, right, all the time. That means that you know, if you so if you for example, if you stuff on five different topics on one page, right? You know, if you're building a con, if you're building a design, and in that design you you know you're trying to explain five different topics in the one page, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Probably create type five different pages, right? Mm-hmm. So that, you know, all pages are different and, you know, it can very contextually define uh, or, or give information on what, you know, you want to communicate to the people. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that, just, just be a little more aware that, you know, how would you serve this content from an, uh, to the voice world, right? Right. Uh, from an accessibility point of view, right? Uh, you know, uh, it's not an, it should not be an afterthought, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, here in, you know, you know, we've been, we've been in some of my friend circles, we've been talking about accessibility first designs. Okay. Yeah. Right. Think of, think of that. Uh, and from a development point of view, ensure that, you know, you, 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 uh, you know, you force the structure, right. The, how much, you know, don't, uh, don't go over towards the, the unstructured, uh, uh, you know, formats of content, which has been, the kind of way that most of the content or, you know, for example, blogs, right. You have a text, yeah. you will write whatever you want to write into it. Right? Yeah. Um, right? Yes. Don't, uh, so when you're building, uh, this, uh, these, this, this fields or, you know, or this seamless platforms ensure that it is in a structured format, right. If there is a, if there is a, you know, there is no content piece that should go into an unstructured format. Right. Yeah. Uh, so if you do these two things, you, you know, I think, you know, should be good for the voice world. Right. I think, uh, I think the design team is particularly a, a team that might have uh, difficulty around this because uh, the, the kind of work they do is so visual in nature. Uh, and and we, yep. are really say, we are really saying that uh, turn yourself blind and try to experience it in a way. Uh, but, but then, yeah, uh, good tips for the three of them, the three yep. groups. Uh, yeah. Where can we learn more uh, about this? Uh, part of, uh, if we uh, want to... Uh, understand more around uh, voice search or the future of searches and all what should be our yeah. sources of learning yeah so voicebot.ai it's the uh, you know run by a gentleman called Brent Kinsella right mm-hmm. you know uh, that's right now the best uh, platform for all lot of things even so he does a lot of you know data uh, researches and you know surveys and things like that so a lot of question around, you know, what, what, where the consumption is going, what being, what is the kind of consumption is, which people, what kind of people, what industries are consuming. He's trying to answer that. He's literally, um, you know, championing this in a big time. I mean, right. uh, and it's a very popular, uh, you know, uh, you know, blog, right? It's, it's more than 
few million hits every month. So okay. voicebot.ai is the is is probably the the best place. All right. So voicebot.ai. Uh, all right. Uh, we have run out of time. Uh, I'll just uh, close this thing. Firstly, I thank you, uh, Gaurav, uh, for uh, for spending our uh, spending. Uh, a little over an hour with us uh, early morning your time uh, there is a lot to learn it's a little technical in nature the conversation that happened uh, today but i can just summarize a few points that i had uh, uh, that had come out from uh, uh, the talk that gorov gave one is that use schema schema is all about structured data which is to make sure that google and other softwares are able to understand the context and the content that you are giving in uh, use conversational language, use a lot of questions, answer questions. This is something that uh, Gaurav pointed out a few times, a few times over. Uh, and, and also, uh, eventually, this is uh, at this point of time, this topic, from what I understand, is still evolving. But from a larger point of view, uh, as Gaurav pointed out, a large number of things that we are talking about in this context is, is really talking about technical SEO. And it's really talking about how we uh, make uh, uh, our information more understandable by uh, search engines and, and other uh, uh, tools that are out there so that they can make sure that the relevant answers come in, whether search through voice being one of the focus area that Gaurav said, but, or, or any, any other way as well. Like even if you people do start doing text searches, uh, it, this was going to benefit in the long run anyways. Uh, so thanks once again, uh, Gaurav, for this, uh, 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 for your early morning talk. Uh, before I close, I just want to make a few uh, points uh, for our audience. Uh, one is that we are doing uh, these sessions every Saturday. Uh, uh, next, from next Saturday onwards, we'll go back to 11 a.m. time, which is the time when uh, we do most of our talks in, in India, when, especially when the speakers and the participants are from India. Uh, we, uh, this, today, we uh, talked about voice search. Next week, we are going to do a more detailed discussion around AMP. Uh, Carrying forward from the, the conversation we had two weeks back where uh, someone from the AMP team, Naina from AMP team had come in and told us about AMP. But in the coming week, we are going to have a couple of developers around uh, to talk about some uh, practical considerations and, as well as uh, challenges that uh, uh, people have faced in implementing AMP and is really AMP uh, a, a great way forward in, in also trying to address that question in a way. Uh, we are also having conversations around PHP WordPress security. How do we use web page test more effectively? Uh, some conversations around e-commerce, trying to line them up at this point of time. Uh, and also a design oriented talk is something that we are uh, lining up in the uh, next few weeks. Uh, if you would like to hear any topic, or if you would like to speak or participate in, in any of the conversations, uh, please go to hasgeek.com slash content web. There's a place where you can drop in your proposal and you can express your intent to participate or ask for a topic that is useful for uh, all of us. Uh, so that's all from uh, our side. Uh, Gaurav, any closing thoughts? No, absolutely. Uh, this, is, this has been great. Thank you for, for having me here. Um, you have my contact details, guys. You know, feel free to, you know, ping me. You know, have conversations on debates. Uh, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn or Twitter, and happy to, uh, you know, ignite a conversation. Right. It was really fun to have a conversation with you too, Gaurav. I hope you also enjoyed as much. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Uh, have a good day, Gaurav, and a good evening to everyone else in India. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Bye.